At 54, Tyler Perry is breaking his silence about a long-standing friendship that has shaped his career and personal life. In a rare and candid moment, the entertainment mogul finally opens up about Cassie Davis, revealing the deep bond and untold stories that have connected them for decades. The death hoax and health struggles. In today's world, where a single click can send information viral, celebrity death hoaxes have become a twisted game of telephone. Harmless pranks can quickly snowball into a frenzy of fake news, leaving fans and friends utterly devastated. Cassie Davis, the beloved actress and talented comedian who has been a beloved figure in the entertainment industry for decades, once found herself in the heart of this digital chaos. The rumor that Cassie had lost her battle with cancer shocked her fan base and the entertainment industry. This baseless death hoax spread like wildfire across social media, causing widespread panic and heartache among her devoted followers and colleagues. The false reports quickly gained traction, with an outpouring of grief and disbelief flooding social media platforms. Fans were devastated, and colleagues were stunned as they grappled with the shocking news. It seemed as though the entertainment world had lost one of its brightest stars. However, the truth soon emerged, and it became evident that the rumors were nothing more than a cruel fabrication. Tyler Perry, a longtime collaborator and friend of Cassie, was among the first to address the false reports. Known for his quick wit and loyalty, Perry took to social media to set the record straight. He reassured fans that Cassie was very much alive and well, dispelling the dark cloud of misinformation that had engulfed the internet. Perry didn't hold back his frustration frustration and disappointment over the spread of such harmful rumors, emphasizing the importance of verifying information before sharing it. Tyler and Cassie share one of the most enduring and heartwarming friendships in the entertainment industry. Forged through years of creative collaboration, mutual admiration, and unwavering support, their relationship is a shining example of the power of genuine connection. A chance encounter on the set of Tyler's stage play sparked a profound connection between two emerging talents, as they found themselves drawn to each other's passion and creativity. Tyler, known for his strong-willed characters and powerful storytelling, immediately recognized and was impressed by Cassie's ability to bring characters to life with authenticity and humor. This initial meeting ignited a creative spark, fostering a lifelong friendship and partnership that would yield countless unforgettable performances. Their professional relationship took off when Tyler cast Cassie as Aunt Bam in his Medea franchise. The character of Aunt Bam, a sassy, no-nonsense, yet lovable elderly woman, became an instant hit with audiences. Cassie's portrayal of Aunt Bam was not only hilarious, but also brought depth and warmth to the character, making her one of the most beloved figures in the Medea universe. The chemistry between Medea, played by Tyler, and Aunt Bam was undeniable. Their on-screen banter, comedic timing, and the genuine affection that seemed to underlie their interactions made them one of the most iconic duos in modern film and television. The success of their characters was a direct reflection of the real-life bond between Perry and Davis. They understood each other's rhythms, comedic styles, and emotional beats which translated seamlessly into their performances. However, while their professional relationship is impressive, it's their off-screen friendship that truly stands out. They have supported each other through thick and thin, demonstrating a bond that goes beyond mere work colleagues. In interviews, both have spoken candidly about the close connection they share, often referring to each other as family. In his characteristic humorous style, Perry recounted the moment he reached out to Cassie after receiving numerous calls and messages from people expressing their condolences. He jokingly asked her if she was dead to which Cassie, with her trademark humor, responded in the affirmative. The conversation lightened the heavy mood, and the news of Cassie's well-being quickly spread, putting an end to the unnecessary panic. Other close friends and colleagues of Cassie also stepped forward to denounce the hoax. They reaffirmed that Cassie was in good health, their public statements playing a crucial role in quelling the rumors and restoring peace of mind to her worried fans. However, while the cancer rumors were completely unfounded, there was indeed a health issue that Cassie had been quietly battling, something that that she had not shared with the public until she felt the time was right. Observant fans had noticed subtle changes in her appearance, leading to speculation about her health. The truth was far from what the rumors suggested, and when Cassie decided to open up, her revelation was met with both concern and admiration. In a candid interview, Cassie revealed that she had been diagnosed with Bell's palsy, a condition that causes sudden, temporary weakness or paralysis of the muscles on one side of the face. For an actress whose facial expressions are an integral part of her craft, this diagnosis was particularly challenging. The drooping of her face and the difficulty in controlling the muscles on one side had initially led some to believe she had suffered a stroke, but Cassie was quick to clarify that this was not the case. The condition, which had first manifested in 2020, came as a shock to Cassie. The sudden change in her appearance and the physical challenges it presented were difficult to come to terms with. Yet, true to her resilient nature, Cassie leaned on her faith, family, and friends to navigate this difficult period. Her strong spiritual foundation and the 
unwavering support of her loved ones provided her with the strength she needed to face this new chapter in her life. In her interview, Cassie shared how she managed to continue working despite her condition. She spoke about the adjustments she made in her professional life to accommodate the changes brought about by Bell's palsy. Makeup and lighting techniques were used to minimize the visible effects on screen, allowing her to continue doing what she loved without compromising her performance. Tyler Perry and the rest of the House of Pain cast and crew rallied around her, offering the necessary support and accommodations to help her continue working. This outpouring of support was instrumental in helping Cassie maintain her confidence and focus during such a challenging time. The unity and solidarity shown by her colleagues showed the deep bonds of friendship and respect that existed behind the scenes. By opening up about her battle with Bell's palsy, Cassie has significantly raised awareness about the condition and its impact on those affected. Her willingness to share her personal experience has inspired countless individuals facing similar health challenges, demonstrating that it is possible to continue chasing your dreams despite physical limitations. The partnership. Cassie's career took a transformative turn when she met Tyler Perry, an encounter that shaped her future and solidified her place in audiences' hearts. This meeting marked a turning point, catapulting her to new heights and establishing her as a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Cassie's story with Tyler Perry began in the early 2000s when the entertainment industry was in a period of transition. Stage plays, once considered a niche, were beginning to gain mainstream appeal, largely thanks to Perry's innovative approach. Tyler Perry, a multi-talented playwright, actor, and filmmaker, had a knack for blending comedy, drama, and moral lessons into his productions, creating a unique style that resonated deeply with audiences. And in Cassie, Perry saw something special. However, the encounter that changed Cassie's life began with a simple yet powerful idea. Perry wanted her to feature in one of his stage plays. At the time, Cassie was no stranger to the entertainment world, and she had already made a name for herself with various roles in film and television, but stage acting was entirely different. It required raw, unfiltered energy, a connection with the audience that was immediate and intense. Cassie was hesitant, unsure if this was the right move for her career. She questioned whether she could transition smoothly into live theater, where there were no second takes and no room for error. But Tyler Perry was nothing if not persistent. He recognized in Cassie a rare combination of talent, charisma, and authenticity that he knew could light up the stage. His confidence in her abilities was unwavering, and his encouragement was relentless. Perry had a vision, and in that vision, Cassie was a shining star. He believed that once she embraced the world of stage acting, she would not only succeed, but excel beyond her wildest dreams. After much contemplation, Cassie decided to take the leap. She agreed to join Perry's stage play, I Can Do Bad All By Myself, where she was cast in the role of Ella Payne. This decision marked the beginning of a new chapter in her career, one that would prove to be both challenging and immensely rewarding. Stepping onto the stage as Ella Payne, Cassie immediately felt the electric energy that live theater can provide. It was a different kind of performance, one that demanded every ounce of her focus and creativity. But as the curtains rose and she delivered her first lines, it became clear that Perry's faith in her was well-placed. Her portrayal of Ella Payne was nothing short of spectacular. Audiences were captivated by her performance, and critics took notice. The warmth, humor, and relatability she brought to the character resonated deeply with viewers, making Ella Payne an instant fan favorite. However, this initial success was just the beginning. The chemistry between Cassie and Tyler Perry was undeniable, and their collaboration would soon lead to even greater opportunities. Perry, always one to recognize a good thing when he saw it, continued to cast Cassie in his productions, each time challenging her to push her boundaries and explore new facets of her talent. One of the most significant milestones in Cassie's career came when she was cast in Tyler Perry's iconic Medea franchise. Medea, the tough-talking, no-nonsense grandmother with a heart of gold, had become a cultural phenomenon, and being part of this franchise was a game-changer for any actor. Cassie was given the opportunity to reprise her role as Ella Payne, this time within the broader context of the Medea universe. The Medea films were known for their humor, heart, and the ability to tackle serious social issues with a light touch. Cassie's portrayal of Ella Payne in these productions was nothing short of brilliant. She brought a unique energy to the role, balancing the character's warmth and humor with moments of genuine emotion and depth. Her performances were pivotal to the success of the Medea franchise, and she quickly became a fan favorite. Audiences loved her portrayal of Ella Payne, and her character became synonymous with the series' success. The widespread recognition that came with the Medea franchise catapulted Cassie into the spotlight. She was no longer just a talented actress. She was now a household name, beloved by millions for her relatable and heartfelt performances. Her work with Tyler Perry had established her as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, and she continued to build on this success with each new project. Cassie's collaboration with Tyler Perry wasn't limited to the Medea film franchise. She also became a key player in one of Perry's most successful television ventures, Tyler Perry's House of Pain. In this series, 
series, she once again took on the role of Ella Payne, this time as part of a larger ensemble cast. The show, which aired from 2007 to 2012 and was later revived, became one of the most popular programs on cable television. It was praised for its ability to address real-life issues within the framework of a comedy series, and Cassie's portrayal of Ella Payne was a major contributing factor to its success. In House of Pain, Cassie's character was the glue that held the Payne family together. Ella Payne was a loving wife, mother, and grandmother, whose warmth and wisdom often served as the moral compass of the show. Cassie's performance was a masterclass in comedic timing, but it also showcased her ability to convey deep emotion and vulnerability. Her portrayal of Ella Payne was met with critical acclaim, earning her numerous awards, including the NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Actress in a Comedy Series. Despite her success with Tyler Perry, Cassie didn't limit herself to just one creative avenue. She continued to explore a variety of roles in other television shows and films, further demonstrating her versatility as an actress. Whether in dramatic roles or comedic ones, Cassie brought her signature blend of authenticity and charisma to every character she portrayed. Her talent, combined with her work ethic and dedication to her craft, made her a sought-after actress in the industry. Early Life and Career Born as Cassandra Davis on July 31, 1964, in the charming town of Holly Springs, Mississippi, Cassie grew up in a small, close-knit community where her life was shaped by the warm embrace of faith, family, and a passion for performance. The Davis household was one of strong Christian values, with her parents playing an instrumental role in molding the character of the young Cassie. Their unwavering belief in the power of faith and the importance of hard work left an indelible mark on Cassie, influencing the choices she would make both personally and professionally throughout her life. Though Cassie has been rather private about the details of her family life, it's clear that her parents recognized their daughter's budding talents from an early age. They encouraged her to explore her interests, particularly her love for music and the performing arts. In Holly Springs, Cassie was an active participant in school plays and the local choir, her voice and presence commanding attention. It was in these early years that her family, recognizing the spark within her, began to nurture her talents, laying the groundwork for what would become a remarkable career. After completing her high school education, Cassie set her sights on furthering her studies in music, a decision that led her to Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. Spelman, a historically black liberal arts college for women, was known for its strong emphasis on the arts. It was the perfect environment for Cassie to refine her musical skills and immerse herself in the world of performance. Her time at Spelman was a whirlwind of opportunities, allowing her to explore various facets of music, performance, and the arts in general. However, Cassie's journey at Spelman was not without its challenges. As a devout Christian, she held her faith close, allowing it to guide her every move. When the time came for a required recital, Cassie chose to perform a Christian song, a decision that reflected her deep spiritual convictions. Unfortunately, the college administration had strict guidelines regarding the types of music that could be performed during official recitals, and they did not permit her chosen piece. This decision struck a deep chord with Cassie. Her faith was not just a part of her, it was the cornerstone of her identity. To be denied the opportunity to express it through her music felt like a compromise she could not make. Faced with this dilemma, Cassie made the difficult decision to leave Spelman College without completing her degree. It was a significant turning point in her life, marking the end of one chapter and the beginning of another, one that would see her pursue her dreams outside the traditional educational framework. Leaving college was a challenging decision, but it also opened new doors for Cassie, leading her to the vibrant city of Atlanta, where she began to focus on her career in acting and music. Despite not having a formal degree, Cassie's talent and determination guided her through the competitive landscape of the entertainment entertainment industry. She took on various roles in theater and television, gradually building a name for herself. Throughout her career, Cassie remained steadfast in her faith, allowing her Christian beliefs to guide her choices, both on and off the screen. This unwavering commitment to her faith became a hallmark of her professional identity, influencing the roles she accepted and the projects she pursued. Cassie Davis's official acting career began in 1988, when she landed a role in Spike Lee's film School Days. The film, which delved into the complexities of black college life, provided Cassie with her first opportunity to showcase her talent on a larger stage. Though her role was relatively small, it was significant enough to catch the attention of industry professionals, putting her on the radar of those who would later shape her career. This initial exposure opened doors for Cassie, leading to a series of roles in television and film that would gradually build her reputation in the entertainment world. A pivotal moment in Cassie's early career was her discovery by Chip Fields, an accomplished actress, singer, and director. Recognizing Cassie's potential, Chip took her 
her under her wing, offering mentorship and guidance that would prove instrumental in Cassie's professional development. Under Chip's mentorship, Cassie refined her acting skills and gained valuable insights into the entertainment industry. This relationship was a turning point, as it not only enhanced her abilities, but also expanded her network within the industry, setting the stage for future success. Throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s, Cassie Davis continued to hone her craft, landing various roles in television shows and films. She appeared in the television series Living Single, where she played the role of Francine, and in Married with Children, where she took on the role of Millie. These roles, though not leading, were crucial in helping Cassie gain experience and visibility. Her performances were well-received, and she quickly became known for her impeccable comedic timing and ability to bring depth to her characters. Cassie also appeared in films such as Silent Bomb and the television series A Different World, further diversifying her portfolio. These early roles showcased her versatility as an actress, demonstrating her ability to handle a wide range of characters and genres. Each role contributed to her growing reputation as a talented and reliable actress, capable of delivering compelling performances in both comedy and drama. As her career began to take off, Cassie never lost sight of the importance of her faith. It remained a guiding force in her life, influencing the choices she made and the roles she pursued. Her Christian beliefs were not just a part of her identity, they were the foundation upon which she built her career. This commitment to her faith often led her to seek out roles that aligned with her values, allowing her to express her spirituality through her work. Despite the challenges she faced early in her career, Cassie's talent and perseverance eventually paid off. She became a beloved figure in the entertainment industry, known for her warmth, humor, and unwavering dedication to her craft. In 2008, after years of building a successful career, Cassie made the decision to return to Spelman College to finish what she had started. With her career booming, she believed that obtaining her degree would open even more doors for her, both in acting and beyond. The decision to go back to school was not an easy one, but it was a testament to Cassie's commitment to personal growth and her belief in the importance of education. In 2009, she proudly completed her degree, achieving a goal that had long been delayed but never forgotten, personal life and relationship. For years, fans and media alike were convinced that Cassie and her on-screen husband, LeVan Davis, were married in real life. Their undeniable chemistry on Tyler Perry's House of Pain was so convincing that it blurred the lines between fiction and reality for many. As the lovable Ella and the humorous yet grumpy Curtis Payne, the two actors created a dynamic that resonated deeply with audiences, making their portrayal of a married couple feel all too real. The fact that they shared the same last name only added fuel to the fire, leading to widespread speculation that their bond extended beyond the screen. Despite the persistent rumors, both Cassie and LaVon have repeatedly clarified that their relationship is strictly professional. They are not, nor have they ever been, romantically involved. While their on-screen marriage may have been the subject of countless debates and discussions, the truth about Cassie's personal life tells a different story. One that's just as heartwarming, though far less publicized. Cassie is, in fact, happily married, but not to live on. Her husband is Carrie Patton, her longtime sweetheart. Their love story is one for the books, beginning way back in their childhood days. The two started dating in their teens, forming a bond that would withstand the test of time. Although life led them in different directions, fate had other plans. After decades apart, Cassie and Carrie reconnected and rekindled their romance. It was as if no time had passed, and the deep affection they had for each other only grew stronger. In 2017, after years of friendship and love, Cassie and Carrie decided to make it official. They tied the knot in an intimate ceremony surrounded by their closest friends and family. The occasion was a joyous one, filled with laughter, tears, and the warmth of two souls who had finally found their way back to each other. Unlike the public frenzy surrounding her speculated relationship with LeVan, Cassie's marriage to Carrie has been a more private affair. The couple has chosen to keep their personal life away from the prying eyes of the public, a decision that reflects their mutual desire for a low-key existence. Their relationship is built on a strong foundation of friendship, love, and mutual respect, values that have seen them through the ups and downs of life. Carrie, who prefers to stay out of the spotlight, has been a pillar of support for Cassie, providing her with the emotional strength she needs in her demanding career. Whether she's on set or at home, Cassie knows she can always count on Carrie to be there for her, cheering her on from the sidelines. Though the couple does not have any children, their life together is filled with joy and contentment. They continue to support each other in all their endeavors, living a life that, while private, is rich in love and happiness. Happiness. To this day, Cassie and Carrie remain happily married. Cassie has built an impressive career and a substantial net worth, which as of 2024 is estimated to be around $6 million. This financial success is the result of her extensive work in television and film, where her roles have not only earned her wealth, but also widespread recognition and admiration. Yet despite her professional achievements, Cassie remains deeply grounded.
grounded, using her platform to give back to the community in meaningful ways. One of the most remarkable aspects of Cassie's journey is her commitment to charitable endeavors, especially those close to her heart. Cassie has been open about her personal battle with Bell's palsy, a condition that has significantly impacted her life. Rather than allowing this challenge to define her, she has turned it into a powerful motivator for her philanthropic work. Cassie actively supports organizations that focus on individuals affected by Bell's palsy, using her voice to raise awareness and funds. Her efforts are aimed at improving resources and providing better support systems for those dealing with this condition, making a tangible difference in their lives. Cassie's charitable spirit extends beyond health-related causes. She's also deeply involved in faith-based charities, driven by her strong Christian beliefs. Her faith is the cornerstone of her life, guiding her actions both personally and professionally. Through her involvement in church-based initiatives, Cassie supports a variety of programs designed to uplift underprivileged communities. These initiatives include food drives, educational scholarships, and youth mentorship programs, all of which have a lasting impact on those they serve. Cassie's dedication to these causes reflects her desire to use her success for the greater good, helping to create opportunities and provide support where it is most needed. For more videos like this, click on the next card. John Travolta easily fits the bill of one of the most famous and successful actors of our time. But despite his fame and fortune, he has been plagued by rumors surrounding his sexuality for close to a decade. Travolta, who has been quiet all this time, has finally decided to open up about his sexuality and tell his side of the story. Stay tuned. Travolta opens up. Recent questions regarding Travolta's sexuality were brought to light after the publishing of a book titled A Billion Years, My Escape from a Life in the Highest Ranks of Scientology. The book brought to light explosive allegations about Hollywood icon John Travolta. The memoir, written by former high-ranking Scientology officer Mike Rinder, claimed to reveal a secret side of Travolta's life that has been kept hidden for years. Rinder alleged that he personally witnessed Travolta engage in a passionate kiss with a male masseur, shedding light on the actor's rumored sexuality. This revelation sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and raised questions about Travolta's public image and the influence of the Church of Scientology. According to Rinder, he was assigned to assist Travolta with some public relations issues, acting as a trusted confidant and advisor to the Hollywood star. Little did Rinder know that his involvement would lead him down a path of scandal and intrigue. Picture this, a luxurious hotel suite where Rinder and Travolta engage in a conversation about the actor's public image. As they discuss strategies to combat rumors and protect Travolta's reputation, an unexpected visitor enters the room. Clad in a bathrobe, the male masseur walks in, catching both Rinder and Travolta off guard. What happens next is nothing short of jaw-dropping. In front of Rinder's astonished eyes, the masseur leans in and plants a passionate kiss on Travolta's lips. The room falls silent as the shocking scene unfolds. Rinder, stunned by what he has just witnessed, can hardly believe his eyes. This act of intimacy, right in front of a senior Scientology official, was a breach of protocol and a violation of the church's strict code of conduct. Travolta, seemingly unfazed by the presence of Rinder, calmly tells the masseur, I'll be in soon, as the masseur heads towards the bedroom. This momentary glimpse into Travolta's private life leaves Rinder questioning the trust the actor has placed in him. That was pretty shocking, right in front of a senior Scientology. Official, it was just not done. I guess it was indicative of the trust he placed on me, he Rinder wrote. Rinder reflects on the shocking encounter, realizing the magnitude of what he has just witnessed. This incident, which would have been scandalous in any context, becomes even more significant when considering Travolta's public image and the rumors that have surrounded him for years. Rinder reveals in his memoir that since the 1990s, Travolta has been plagued by stories of alleged male lovers, including former pilots and even a porn star. These rumors have followed him throughout his career casting a shadow over his personal life and raising questions about his sexuality. Since the beginning of the 90s, Travolta had been hounded by stories from various alleged male lovers, including one of his former pilots as well as a porn star, Rinder wrote in his memoir. It becomes clear that Rinder's role in assisting Travolta with public relations issues was not just about managing rumors, but also about protecting the image of the perfect Scientology couple. Travolta's late wife, Kelly Preston, who tragically passed away in 2020, was an integral part of this image. Rinder explains in his memoir, that the Church of Scientology, aware of the potential PR damage a story of gay sex would have on the perfect Scientology couple, went to great lengths to suppress these rumors. They dug up dirt on the sources and threatened the media with lawsuits, all in an effort to protect Travolta's reputation and the image of the Church. Realizing the potential PR damage a story of gay sex would have on the perfect Scientology couple of John and Kelly, we dug up dirt on the sources and threatened the media with lawsuits, Rinder wrote in the book. Rinder delves deeper into the Church's perspective on homosexuality
sexuality, revealing that while they claim not to be anti-gay, the mere suggestion of a Scientologist being described as gay would cause panic within the organization. For Scientologists, not being cured of homosexuality would be seen as a failure of the church's teachings. Reinder also sheds light on Travolta's personal struggle with his sexuality. He believes that Travolta would be more open about his orientation if it weren't for the stigma he feels due to his strong belief in Scientology. This internal conflict has kept Travolta's true self hidden from the public eye. Much has been made of John's sexuality and whatever the realities of his sexual orientation. Maybe, I firmly believe he would be more open about it, were it not for the stigma he feels due to his strong belief in Scientology, he wrote. These revelations by Rinder have sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and have left many questioning the truth behind the rumors that have swirled around Travolta for years. In 2014, Travolta was hit by yet another bombshell regarding his sexual orientation. It was the early 1980s, a time of glitz, glamour, and secrets lurking behind the scenes of Hollywood. In the midst of this captivating era, a chance encounter would forever change the lives of two individuals. This is the story of Doug Goderba and John Travolta's alleged affair. In February 1981, Doug Goderba, a skilled pilot from California, found himself interviewing for a pilot job. Little did he know that this interview would lead to a whirlwind romance with one of the biggest stars of the silver screen, John Travolta. The chemistry between Goderba and Travolta was undeniable from the start. As they engaged in conversation, it became clear that there was a connection that went beyond a professional relationship. Goderba recalls feeling a sense of being courted by Travolta during their initial meeting. As they walked from the interview to the restaurant, the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. I got the sense I was being courted, Goderba said. As we walked from the restaurant back to the room, John suddenly said, Hey, would you like a massage? Over dinner at the luxurious Highlands Resort in Carmel, California, the two men shared a bottle of Merlot wine. The conversation flowed effortlessly, and the sparks between them grew stronger with each passing moment. Goderba admits that he had anticipated this invitation, a moment that would mark the beginning of their passionate affair. The massage quickly turned into an intimate encounter, with Travolta displaying both tenderness and passion. From that moment on, their relationship blossomed, taking them on a journey filled with romance and secrecy. Travolta, known for his love of travel, whisked Gotterba away to exotic destinations, creating memories that would last a lifetime. Hawaii, Amsterdam, Kenya. These were just a few of the destinations where the couple found solace in each other's arms. Sometimes Travolta would bring women along as a cover, but it was Gotterba who held the key to his heart. Sometimes he'd bring women along as beards, but he would ask me to join him in his suite and we'd spend the nights together. It was our little secret, Gotterba claimed. Gotterba encouraged Travolta to pursue a girlfriend as a way to deflect attention from their relationship. And so, the actor began dating Brooke Shields, a relationship that was merely a facade to the outside world. However, as with any clandestine affair, tensions began to arise. Goderba recalls the frequent unannounced visits from Travolta, who would check up on him and even search through his belongings, desperate to catch him in an act of infidelity. He'd show up on my doorstep, unannounced, wanting to make sure I was being faithful. He'd disappear into my bedroom, going through my drawers, looking for any sign of betrayal, Goderba claimed. The pressure to drop everything and be available to Travolta at a moment's notice weighed heavily on Goderba. If he failed to comply, Travolta would ignore him for days, leaving him feeling isolated and uncertain about the future of their affair. Despite the challenges they faced, their love affair continued for six years, a roller coaster of emotions, passion, and secrecy. But as with all things, their story would eventually come to an end. In 1986, the tensions between Goderba and Travolta reached a breaking point. The constant surveillance and the pressure to be available at all times became too much to bear. Their once passionate love affair had turned into a source of anxiety and uncertainty, and so, their affair came to an end, leaving both men with a mix of emotions and a sense of closure. But their paths would cross once more, years later, after Travolta had married actress Kelly Preston. The end of their affair in 1986 marked the beginning of a tumultuous period for both Goderba and Travolta. The once passionate love they shared had turned into a source of anxiety and uncertainty. But little did they know that their secrets would soon be exposed to the world. In the years following their breakup, Travolta faced legal battles that would test his reputation and personal life. Two anonymous masseurs, known as John John Doe's 1 and 2 filed federal lawsuits accusing Travolta of inappropriate behavior during massages. The first Doe withdrew his claim after Travolta provided evidence that he was in New York on the day of the alleged incident in Beverly Hills. This victory for Travolta seemed to cast doubt on the credibility of the allegations. Travolta's representatives immediately dismissed the allegations made by Goderba, labeling them as a retread of a previous story published by a tabloid. They argue that these claims lack credibility and are merely an attempt to gain attention and profit from Travolta's fame. This 
ridiculous so-called news story is a retread of a story published a few weeks ago by the same desperate supermarket tabloid. The same tabloid that impossibly claimed that John Travolta had an encounter with Doe Hash One in Beverly Hills when he was actually on the East Coast working on a movie, Travolta's camp claimed. Gotterba, on the other hand, stood by his claims, insisting that his relationship with Travolta was real and that he had the evidence to prove it. The public was left divided, with some questioning the motives behind Gotterba's revelations. The scandalous affair between Gotterba and Travolta thrust both men into the spotlight, attracting intense media scrutiny. Paparazzi followed their every move, capturing moments of vulnerability and speculation. Gotterba, once a private individual, found himself thrust into the public eye, facing questions and judgment from the world. The pressure of the media circus took a toll on his personal life and his sense of identity. Travolta, a seasoned actor accustomed to the spotlight, faced his fair share of challenges as well. The public's perception of him shifted, and his personal life became a topic of discussion and gossip. Despite the public scrutiny, Travolta continued to focus on his career, starring in successful films and maintaining a presence in the entertainment industry. However, the allegations and the constant media attention took a toll on his personal life and relationships. The tabloids continued to churn out sensational headlines, speculating about Travolta's sexuality and the truth behind his alleged affairs. The public's fascination with his personal life seemed insatiable. Travolta's marriage to actress Kelly Preston provided a shield from the public eye, but the rumors and allegations persisted. The couple faced challenges together, navigating the complexities of fame and the impact it had on their relationship. Travolta, seemingly tired of all the accusations, spoke up about the scandals. According to him, people were just trying to get a quick paycheck from him. This is every celebrity's Achilles heel. It's just about people wanting money. That's all. It happens on many levels. Also, I don't care that much about it. Other people may attack it back more than I do, but I let all the media stuff go a long time ago because I can't control it. I think that's why it persists, to some degree, Travolta told the press. As it turns out, Gotterba had allegedly asked for $10 million to settle the case out of court. Although Travolta continues to ward off the allegations surrounding his sexuality, it is important to note that they don't overshadow his outstanding career as an award-winning actor. John Travolta's legacy. From his humble beginnings in television, to his unforgettable roles in films like Grease and Pulp Fiction, Travolta has left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. In the late 1970s, a young and talented actor burst onto the television screens, capturing the hearts of audiences with his undeniable charm and magnetic presence. That actor was none other than John Travolta, and his journey to stardom began with his breakthrough role in the hit sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter. Travolta's portrayal of Vinnie Barbarino, a charismatic and street-smart high school student, instantly made him a fan favorite. His infectious smile, impeccable comedic timing, and natural acting abilities brought the character to life in a way that resonated with viewers across the nation. Travolta's performance in Welcome Back, Cotter not only showcased his immense talent, but also marked the beginning of a remarkable acting career. The sitcom, created by Gabe Kaplan, centered around a group of high school students known as the Sweat Hogs and their unconventional teacher, Mr. Cotter. Travolta's character, Vinnie Barbarino, was the epitome of coolness, with his leather jacket, slicked back hair, and quick wit. Audiences were drawn to Vinnie's rebellious nature and his ability to effortlessly navigate the challenges of high school life. Welcome back, Cotter became an instant hit, captivating audiences with its relatable characters and hilarious storylines. Travolta's portrayal of Vinnie Barbarino quickly became the show's breakout star, stealing every scene he appeared in. His on-screen charisma and undeniable talent set him apart from his fellow cast members, earning him a dedicated fan base and critical acclaim. The success of Welcome Back, Cotter not only launched Travolta's acting career but also opened doors for him in the film industry. Hollywood took notice of his undeniable talent and the immense popularity he garnered through the sitcom. It wasn't. Long before Travolta was offered his first major film role, marking the beginning of a new chapter in his career. The transition from television to film proved to be a pivotal moment for Travolta. He faced the challenge of proving himself as a leading man outside the realm of sitcoms. However, with his undeniable talent and the charisma that had captivated audiences on the small screen, Travolta was more than ready to take on the silver screen. In the late 1970s, John Travolta's career reached new heights as he took on two iconic roles that would forever solidify his status as a Hollywood legend. These roles, in the films Grease and Saturday Night Fever, not only showcased Travolta's immense talent, but also became cultural phenomena that left an indelible mark on popular culture. Released in the late 1970s, Grease became an instant hit, captivating audiences with its catchy songs, vibrant dance numbers, and nostalgic portrayal of high school life in the 50s. Travolta's portrayal of Danny Zuko, the charismatic and rebellious leader of the T-Birds, was nothing short of electrifying. Travolta's performance in Grease showcased his versatility as an actor, as he effortlessly transitioned from the tough and cool Danny Zuko to the vulnerable and love-struck teenager. His on-screen chemistry with Olivia Newton-John, who played the sweet and innocent Sandy, was palpable, adding an extra layer of depth to the film's love story. Audience
audiences couldn't help but be swept away by the infectious energy and undeniable charm that Travolta brought to the role. Grease became a cultural phenomenon, with its soundtrack topping the charts and its memorable characters ingrained in the hearts of fans worldwide. Travolta's portrayal of Danny Zuko not only solidified his status as a heartthrob, but also showcased his ability to captivate audiences with his singing and dancing abilities. The film's success propelled Travolta to new heights of fame and opened doors for him to explore a wide range of roles. Following the success of Grease, Travolta took on another groundbreaking role in the film Saturday Night Fever. Directed by John Badham, the film delved into the disco culture of the era and followed the story of Tony Manero, a talented dancer from Brooklyn. Travolta's portrayal of Tony was nothing short of mesmerizing, as he brought the character to life with his electrifying dance moves and raw emotional depth. Saturday Night Fever became a cultural phenomenon, with its soundtrack dominating the charts and its impact on popular culture undeniable. Travolta's performance as Tony Manero earned him widespread acclaim and a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Actor. His ability to seamlessly transition between intense drama and captivating dance sequences showcased his versatility as an actor and solidified his status as a true talent in the industry. Both Grease and Saturday Night Fever not only catapulted Travolta to international stardom, but also left a lasting impact on popular culture. The films became touchstones of their respective eras, capturing the essence of the 70s and 50s and resonating with audiences of all ages. The characters Travolta portrayed, Danny Zuko and Tony Manero, became cultural icons with their fashion, catchphrases, and dance moves forever etched in the collective memory of fans. The success of Saturday Night Fever further cemented Travolta's place in Hollywood and opened doors for him to explore a wide range of roles. He became one of the most sought-after actors of his time, with filmmakers eager to work with the rising star. Travolta's ability to captivate audiences with his on-screen presence and his undeniable talent made him a force to be reckoned with in the industry. Travolta's success in these films paved the way for him to explore a wide range of roles and genres. He continued to captivate audiences with his performances in films like Urban Cowboy, Blowout, and Staying Alive. While some films achieved critical and commercial success, others faced challenges. But Travolta's talent and dedication to his craft remained unwavering. After a period of ups and downs in his career, John Travolta experienced a remarkable comeback that would redefine his status in Hollywood. This resurgence came in the form of his role in Quentin Tarantino's groundbreaking film, Pulp Fiction. Travolta's portrayal of Vincent Vega not only reignited his career, but also garnered critical acclaim and solidified his status as a versatile and talented actor. Released in the mid-1990s, Pulp Fiction was a game-changer in the world of cinema. Tarantino's non-linear storytelling, sharp dialogue, and eclectic characters captivated audiences and critics alike. Travolta's performance as Vincent Vega, a charismatic hitman with a penchant for dance, was a revelation. Travolta's portrayal of Vincent Vega showcased his ability to seamlessly transition between intense drama and dark humor. He brought depth and complexity to the character, capturing the essence of Vincent's conflicted nature. Audiences were captivated by Travolta's on-screen presence as he effortlessly commanded every scene he appeared in. Pulp Fiction not only marked a turning point in Travolta's career, but also became a cultural phenomenon. The film's unconventional narrative structure, memorable dialogue, and iconic moments made it an instant classic. Travolta's performance was hailed as a career-defining moment, earning him critical acclaim and numerous accolades. His portrayal of Vincent Vega earned him a nomination for an Academy Award for Best Actor, a Golden Globe nomination, and a BAFTA nomination. Travolta's ability to breathe life into the complex character of Vincent Vega showcased his range as an actor and solidified his status as a true talent in the industry. The success of Pulp Fiction opened doors for Travolta, leading to a resurgence in his career. He was once again in high demand, with filmmakers eager to work with the actor who had proven his ability to captivate audiences and deliver powerful performances. Travolta's comeback was not only a testament to his talent, but also a testament to his resilience and determination to succeed. Following Pulp Fiction, Travolta continued to take on a variety of roles that showcased his versatility as an actor. He starred in films like Get Shorty, Face Off, and Primary Colors, further solidifying his status as a leading man in Hollywood. Travolta's ability to seamlessly transition between genres and captivate audiences with his performances made him a force to be reckoned with. John Travolta's talents extend far beyond the realm of acting. In addition to his on-screen charisma, he is also a gifted singer-songwriter and a passionate aviator. Travolta's involvement in music and his love for aviation have added another dimension to his illustrious career, showcasing his diverse talents and passions. Travolta's musical journey began with his breakthrough role in the film Grease, where he showcased his singing abilities alongside Olivia Newton-John. The film's soundtrack became a global sensation, with Travolta's performances on songs like You're the One That I Want and Summer Nights captivating audiences worldwide. His smooth vocals and infectious energy brought the songs to life, solidifying his status as a musical talent. Building on the success of Grease Travolta, released his own albums, some of which were tied to the films he starred in. These albums, showcased 
showcased his versatility as a singer and his ability to connect with audiences through music. Travolta's songs charted on the Billboard Hot 100 and Adult Contemporary Charts, further cementing his status as a musical force to be reckoned with. Travolta's musical talents were not limited to his film projects. He continued to explore his passion for music through his solo albums, which featured a mix of original songs and covers. His smooth vocals and heartfelt performances resonated with listeners, earning him a dedicated fan base in the music industry. While Travolta's contributions to the music world are significant, his passion for aviation is equally remarkable. Travolta is a licensed pilot and has been actively involved in the aviation community for many years. His love for flying began at a young age and has remained a constant throughout his life. Travolta's dedication to aviation is evident in his ownership of several aircraft, including a Boeing 707. His collection of planes is a testament to his deep appreciation for the art of flying. Travolta's passion for aviation extends beyond his personal collection, as he has actively contributed to the aviation community. Travolta's love for aviation has also allowed him to combine his passions for acting and flying. He has starred in films like Airplane and Flight of the Intruder, where his characters were pilots, further showcasing his dedication to both crafts. In 1984, Travolta was inducted into the American Academy of Achievement and presented with the Golden Plate Award by Awards Council member General Chuck Yeager, USAF. Travolta was inducted into the Living Legends of Aviation in 2007 and acts as the award show's official ambassador. Travolta has had an illustrious career both on and off the screen, and the recent allegations surrounding his sexuality may do little to distract from his accomplishments. A spokesperson for Scientology told the press that Rinder is an inveterate liar who seeks to profit from his dishonesty. They accused him of orchestrating harassment against the church and its leader through false police reports, incendiary propaganda, and fraudulent media stories. Mike Rinder is an inveterate liar who seeks to profit from his dishonesty. He supports himself by orchestrating the harassment of his former church and its leader through false police reports, incendiary propaganda, and fraudulent media stories. The church's response is swift and aggressive, aiming to discredit Rinder and undermine the credibility of his claims. They paint him as a disgruntled former member seeking revenge, rather than someone speaking out against the alleged misconduct he witnessed during his time in the church. Rinder, however, stands by his allegations, maintaining that he is speaking the truth. He believes that the church's attempts to discredit him are part of a larger pattern of suppressing dissent and protecting their public image at all costs. Travolta isn't new to this kind of drama and will most likely weather the storm. His loyal fans can only hope he continues featuring in more films. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.